So we are staring down the barrel of the midterms, which are next week. Um, Last week on this podcast, we talked about the shift toward the Republicans, at least in the generic ballot. I guess let's start there. You know, as of last week, the, the Dems' fortunes had sort of turned. Did they do anything substantial to shake up the dynamic in the last week? You know, I, I think we're kind of late enough in the cycle where there, there's not a lot you can do to shake things up. Things get shaken up for often for reasons that are just very hard to to uh, suss out. Um, I think one of the things that I always try to remind people is that in the last three, four, you know, two, three, four weeks before an election, you have a small but significant part of the electorate that is tuning in for the first time. And so what what can seem like some, you know, sudden break to one side or the other isn't necessarily a break in the sense of anything changing. It is a portion of the electorate just kind of dialing in to the election. That is a you know relatively small part of the electorate, kind of at this stage in in our politics. But by definition, it it's the people who are up for grabs, right? The people who've been watching constantly for the last year, they're committed. So um, I, I'm not sure that I mean I think there I think there are things that the Democrats did not do earlier that they are paying some price for, uh, but. My read is we are in that stage of the campaign where it, it's just sort of a sprint, and I'm not sure that anything either side is doing in a in an overt political sense uh, is is making that big a difference. So let me just ask to follow up. I mean that that suggests that actually there, and it's always been a sort of electorate on a nice edge, that there may be people not through any uh, strength or, or um, discovery of either party who, are, who will still be in play because they're just checking in. Um, I wonder, Susan and Joe, if your thoughts about that, and, and if I can just put a finer point on it, do you consider, as it strikes me, maybe the White House does, uh, that the House is now out of reach? Well, I mean, I think Josh's point is an excellent one, you know, about the sort of, uh, you know, by definition, anybody who's undecided in this climate uh, of, you know, people having pretty fixed views uh, might, you know, have less focus on politics to begin with. The the converse is also true, though, which is that there's so much more early voting and mail-in voting. There are millions of people who have already cast ballots. And so the premise of a late surge is also, or a late change in message by the parties. And, and, and you see stories every day this week that our Democrats will now focus on this, or you know Biden is now making a last approach to yeah. talk about Social Security and Medicare. Well, that's irrelevant to the millions of votes that are already uh, uh, one way or the other now accounted for. So you know I think it's really a, almost a voting period that we now really have in the United States as opposed to a voting day, which doesn't necessarily cut in favor of uh, either party, I would I would point out, uh, as to the more general question about, well, is the House just out of reach for Democrats? Um, let's put it this way, that were Democrats to keep the House at this point, that would be a significant uh, upsetting of the, the expectations game, certainly. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm probably less in the doom and gloom um, group for Democrats, and I'm, you know, I'm the only partisan on this call or professional uh, politician. I think there are so many variables in this race that it's really hard to understand who's going to vote. And the variables are the Dobbs decision. How much does that motivate people? The attack on democracy, that is the number one issue among Democrats in the state of New York. The rate of inflation, which people feel and Trump's name not being on the ballot. All of these things, I think, is, are so hard to model. And if the pollsters get it right this time, they've done incredible work. Um, the track record of the last few elections has not been incredible. Um, so I, I, I agree with everything that Josh and Susan said on messaging. Um, I think uh, f- from the beginning, Democrats were late on inflation. There's a couple Democrats, I think, now who are using uh, a message and the question is, is, is it too late? 
that I think I think could work, which is that culture wars, banning abortion does nothing to impact inflation. Getting rid of gay marriage does nothing to impact. But that's very late in the game. Uh, and whether that will have an impact or not, I, I, I'm skeptical of. But the only reason I'm not willing to, um, you know, go to uh, the top of a tall building and jump off at this point is I don't know who's going to vote. Um, I, I worry. I mean, I, I'll, I'll make a broader point. Every election we have, somebody says it's the most important election in, in, in the history of our right. country. Now, that right. can't possibly be right. true. But I think this might be the most predictive election that we've seen about where the country is going. You have a very short-term economic pain that people are feeling versus very fundamental rights. The right to have an abortion. The right to have your vote counted for democracy to mean something. And I think if inflation overwhelms um, those two fundamental issues, and we have people like Dr. Oz and Herschel Walker in the Senate, that is a big step towards the failure of democracy. Uh, we've seen many steps already, former President Trump being sort of the instigator. But that would be, uh, for me, th that would be a takeaway uh, from, I guess, what people are expecting, um, which is a, you know, a, a big day for Republicans.